I'm back. Well, here we are again. Another review. But this time, I decided to tackle things the other way around. Not going to the expensive gear and all that shit. Sorry. St stuff. Yeah, I went for the cheapo. Everybody's telling me how great these Chinese guitars are and all the rest of it. And, you know, listen, I've been around a long time, but I thought, okay, well, let's humour them a bit. That's a good way of doing things. So I bought one. <laughs> but it's not one of them counterfeit type of guitars. Uh, you can go and buy one of these, uh, actually, from Toman. T-H-O-M-A-N-N dot D-E or dot co-U-K or whatever one they call themselves. I don't know. But uh, there it is. So where's Paul? Yeah, it all looks good, doesn't it? Well, they always do on the internet, and that's the problem. I mean, when I look at this one, I can see all the things that are immediately different about this guitar and Les Paul. Now, I could do a comparison. I might just do that. But one of the things I'm going to do right now is review this guitar top to bottom. I've got a bit of video to play of how it sounds today. Let's pull that thing down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to turn this guitar into being more of what it should have been when it first was bought. But of course you wouldn't have been able to buy it for the £120 or $170 that I paid for this one, give or take. So by the time I've finished, I've set myself a budget of about £400 in total to turn this guitar into something very rem reminiscent of a, of a Gibson Les Paul. It won't be a Gibson Les Paul, but it will be along the lines. It will certainly sound more like a Gibson Les Paul. There's the sound of these Wilkinson pickups in here, I have to say, are not very good. I've already tried this guitar out and uh, I fitted new strings, the strings it came with, but not very good. Everything else about it's not very good, as you will see as we go through it. So, let's go and take a nice close-up of this first off, because it's going to probably end up being quite a long video where I update and cut and carve and do all sorts of things. Maybe. Or maybe I'll just change a few things and uh, the results will be fantastic or not. Well, we shall see. I mean, is this even real wood? Who knows? We all know when I've finished. So I'm going to take a zoom in now and uh, yeah, start to do a bit of close-up, a bit of eye-to-eye, -eye, so to speak. Here we go. It's going to be interesting. OK, well, I've dimmed the lights a little bit because they were sort of blaring out. And you don't want to see my lights over the top of it, do you? No, of course you don't. OK, well, what have we got here? Well, on the face of it, and I, I stress this, on the face of it, we've got this nice uh, figured flame maple top. I mean, it is a carved top. Well, it appears to be a carved top. But is it? Well, we'll come back to that later, uh, because what we're going to do is have the pickups out and all sorts of things so we can see what we really bought as opposed to how it looks uh, the looks of them can be very very deceiving on the, the cheap guitars it certainly looks like fine maple no doubt about that if you look at this uh, the stop tail piece well to be honest that doesn't look quite right to me it's sort of half fitted if you see what I mean I assume you get that you get that idea. Half fitted. Not like a real Les Paul at all. So that's something we're going to have to look at. And dare I say it, looking at that bridge there, it is awful. It isn't bad. It's absolutely awful. It's crap, right? It's not the same as a real Gibson one either. Uh, anybody who has a real Gibson will tell you that typically these holes here are much smaller on many of or most of the Gibsons that are around today and that's one of the, the sort of things that I've always thought you know with these screw holes and things in it's a bit of a giveaway for a, a sort of copy but looking at these saddles here the saddles are absolutely atrocious I'm getting really close see if I can get that in tune. You can see, they're not even 
finished off. This one's got big lumps on the end of it, if you can see that. It's got big lumps, and that's about the best description I can give it. The, the rest of them are pretty much similar, no matter how we look at it. Look how deep that, <laughs> look how deep that hole, that, that, that V is for the, for the string. It's, it's unreal. And they seem to be like generic, right? So every string has the same uh, V. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not really an American idea, that. That's a Chinese idea. Uh, so that's what you get with that. Let's move along a bit to the pickups. Now, I haven't taken even taken off the material off these. The Wilkinsons, and Wilkinsons are not that bad. I wouldn't call them great pickups, and when you get to hear it in a little while, you'll find that yourself you'll say that oh, it's a little bit thin and toppy and well horrible. <laughs> so really, the, the reality of it is that the pickups are no good either. You're going to be changing them, no matter what anybody tells you. As soon as you learn to play guitar, and if you can play guitar, you would not keep them pickups in this guitar. Oh, unless you're nuts. And you certainly wouldn't keep the bridge there because that's that's real trouble, I can tell you. I've already played this thing. And, and as for the stock tailpiece, remember that? Yes, well, that's a, a yet another story. So we'd have to look at that too. Well, let's have a look at those knobs down there. So, well, they work okay. They're not bad, but they're not, they're not quite the same as the real deal. But they'll suffice, providing one thing. And I'll come back to them a little bit later. So... Looking at the top, it's not that bad, but it's not that good. If you look at that there, I don't know how easy you can tell from this video, but I can tell you now that sticks out more than a real one. It's sort of raised up a little bit. It's no easy way of showing you, but it, it sort of sticks out too much, that does. Bit of a problem. So you're going to have to look at that switch as well, unless you don't care. A lot of people who buy these don't care. Well, it's real wood. More than can be said for that, that Gibson Custom that I bought with the uh, Rich Light as a fretboard. However, the Rich Light doesn't make any difference, or it doesn't appear to to me. I don't hear any difference whatsoever with Rich Light. And it's probably, uh, yeah, better for the trees. <laughs> but as you can see there, Looking at those inserts, there is a little bit of filler, but not a lot. You can just about see it down the edge. Well, let's move down the neck and see what else we can see on these uh, fillers. Now, being fair to this neck, because I think you have to be for 120 quid or 170 dollars, it's not bad. It's actually got binding down it, which is surprising, but it doesn't have the uh, like the original Gibson, let's get the end of there, the end of these on the original Gibsons, check out that custom, actually the plastic comes over the, over the end of the fret. But the fretwork also is pretty good, you know, you can't really knock it, it's, uh, it's on there and it's pretty flat, so the frets are not bad, I have to give it that, the frets are reasonable. Let's move along a bit more. Now this is the point where we start to look closer at things like that. And on this guitar the nut looks pretty good. It just seems like plastic, it's not uh, anything special. So you know you get things where they bind in it, but it's actually been cut quite reasonably well. If you want the truth it looks quite quite reasonable for what it is but one of the things I'm not sure you can notice but you might just be able to notice but all around here this section here it's actually got overspray all on the uh, fretboard just in that section that's never been cleaned off so it's another thing it's a V7 series, it's a V7 450, I think they call this one. And it's got a sort of logo that's sort of a bit like Gibson. And it's got the top of the neck that's a bit like Gibson. 
And it's got these snot coloured tuners that are a bit like Gibson, but they're not. But what's not like Gibson is that plate there. You can see straight off the screw's just thrown in at any old angle. See it? And so is the other one. And the other thing is there's two of them. Well, you never get two of them like that on a real Les Paul. At least none of the ones I've seen. In fact, that third screw's just thrown in as well, if you look at it. It's just sort of thrown on there. And the, the plate that's there doesn't look very good either, does it? Looks pretty crap, really. And I guess if you didn't know any better, you might say, Oh, that's a Gibson neck. You know, it's the same. No volute, as they don't have now. Oh, look at these. It's, they're the same. The oh, only thing is they just don't say Gibson on them. Oh, they must be the same, though, right? And then we have this QC pass. Well, you don't see any of them either. Oh, there's no serial number either. Oh. And there's no country of origin either, so it doesn't really want to tell you where it's made. <laughs> it's a bit crazy, really. Bear in mind what it costs, it's pretty good value, really. Now we've got that scarf joint. You can see it there. A bit on, like on an Ibanez. Uh, Ibanez tend to do that, and they do it to save money. That's why there's a scarf joint rather than a big piece of wood that's been carved down. Right there. Okay. And that's what you get for your money. No! Not the lights in reflection. You don't have my ceiling lights. What you have is real wood. Oh my God! It is real wood. And I'll tell you something else, it's one piece. Well, what wood is he? Well, <laughs> that's another story. Uh, I would hate to hazard a guess of what that wood is. It does not look like mahogany. So don't get any ideas that it is. I I don't know. It could be, but it just doesn't look like it is. And there's another strange thing going on here. Yeah. That. Gibsons don't have that, do they? Well, most of them don't. Let's rephrase that. So, what we've got is this body. It's solid. I can't argue with that. It's got a strap thing on the end. It's got its plastic connector down here. Which is only just on the end of the threads, by the way. Just about holding it in. So that says to me either there's something funny down there. I'll we'll come back to that as well. So let's flip it back over and have another chat. I've got the cup of tea. And I've got the Harley Benton. What more could you ask for? Yeah, it all looks good. Another thing I didn't talk about was this uh, binding around the edge. You know, on a lot of Gibsons, you find the bind, well, not so much these days actually, but in some of the older days that I've been fishing around on Les Pools, you used to find that this binding would go in and out like this, around the body. And in fact, on this one, not only is that binding Pretty good. There's a little bit at the top there where it's missing. Right there. Let's go a quick round it. The rest feels pretty much perfect, but just there they screwed up. Unfortunately, it doesn't leave us anywhere where we could just buy one of these and just play it and everything's good. Everything isn't good. There's more to it than that. Yes, absolutely. Almost everything I've looked at, and I've already looked at a lot more, by the way. I wasn't showing you the whole story. But everything I've looked at needs this, or it needs that, or it needs the other. Except maybe this top. Yeah, what we'll see about that. Oh, when it came, there was a tiny little dent just there. Didn't come the factory that way. That's another little thing that just happens to be there. So, we're going to have to start out and make this guitar better than what it is and one of the first areas uh, things like the electrics the bridge the stop tailpiece obviously the uh, all the pots underneath here the pickups in fact i bought some very uh, well respected pickups for this guitar in fact they cost more than the guitar but remember, we got that budget of about £400 or £420 uh, and $600, give or take, uh, to turn this into something different. And those pickups are going to be 
one of the things that really does that. And here they are, you know, bare knuckle pickups. Now a lot of guys will have heard of these and I did a review on them, not this set by the way, some years ago and uh, the biggest problem I had with them at the time was that when you when you get this sort of pickup, you, know, you get a free set of strings with them and things like that. But when you get this sort of pickup, they're what they call scatter wound. And scatter wound pickups uh, will always sound more toppy than if you had regular uniformly wound pickups because the capacitance in uh, scatter wound pickups is less and less capacitance means more treble. However, I know the good pickups. Those are what are going to go in it. Like it, lump it, or whatever. That's the answer. And they're going to turn this guitar to sound very different than what it is today. But of course, the sound is actually only part of the uh, overall solution, isn't it? What we've got to do is we've got to have the feel and the playability and all them other things. And that's why we've got to look at all the other things on this guitar. We've got to really look at everything. I just hope the, uh, the truss rod not is pretty good. Because usually on these type of guitars it isn't. Anyway, we shall see you later, won't we? Uh, one of the things I haven't bought are actually tuners. No, not that you have on sandwiches. Tuners. Tuners in America. So, the tuners could cost me a little bit of money, and I don't want to go over budget. I'd sooner fiddle around a little bit. But if they prove to be too much trouble, yeah, mark my words, I'll just go and buy a set, and then we'll rip them, them off. I'll show you how to do that, and we'll rip some new ones in, because they'll be different somehow. And then we'll end up with uh, something more like a Les Paul, rather than what we've got today. So now I'm going to start by uh, taking the strings off, taking these few bits and pieces off, and looking at the pickups, flipping them all out. I'm going to take these off. I'm going to flip them out as well. We might as well get on with it, right? Oh, let's do it now. It's no better time, is it? Okay, well, the strings are off. That didn't take long, did it? I've got that uh, stop tail off. I'm as intrigued as you are. There they are. We've got that bridge. Now, this bridge, <laughs> honestly, is as bad as it gets. It's just unbelievable. I'm going to zoom in close to this one. I'll just let you have a look. And there's the shot. You can see that if you look really close, every one of these grooves is exactly the same. And the scary part of it is, you see this really deep one here? Yeah, that was for the treble string. Unbelievably bad. Where's it made? Well, they dare put a name on it. You've got little bits of wire underneath holding everything in place. But if you notice, this one at the end isn't held in place. It's all movable. It's all basically awful and that's what you get when you buy a cheap guitar and there's more I'm off camera don't worry about it you can see the important bits down here we've got the two holes for the bridge and I hate to say it, but they just literally move around pulling it out in fact this one actually fell out can you see that you see that so it comes direct from the factory and it's absolutely, totally unreasonable. <laughs> and then you wonder why your guitar is going to be, look, this actually moves, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to show you just how bad this guitar is. Now listen, I listen to people all day talking about Chinese quality and how great it is. Well, I'm going to show you how great it isn't. And remember this guitar has just come in, brand new from where I bought it from Toman. See that? That is never, that is never going to do anything except move backwards and forwards like that. It's absolutely scandalous. And this one, and this other one here, <laughs> it's plain and simply ridiculous. That is the cheapest, nastiest Chinese quality that I've ever seen. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that. So you get a good idea of what these things are about. And I'm just going to take them out for now, throw them over there with the rest. And then we'll take a look at these holes and see what we can do, if anything.
And if we can't do anything, it's going back. So now I'm just going to whip off this uh, scratch plate and then we'll lift the pickups just to see what's under there. Well, here we are. It's not all extremely bad. What you've got down here is a neck that's got a bit of a tenon in there. So that's okay. I also noticed that it's, it is a real maple top. Yeah, it sure is. The problem is, of course, that the maple top's been drilled out by some comedian down here to make things very difficult. And these pickups are, you've got an N and a B, Wilkinson pickups. Take a look at these, a little bit closer. Oh look, a bit of filler, fancy that. So what they did was put filler in because they didn't drill it square. How bad's that? That's awful. <laughs> anyway, we'll see where we go with that, won't we? Now I just want to focus on that bridge again because that's a pretty major problem for any manufacturer to have things that well, I won't even fit now because of the piece of crap that's actually there. You can see it. Let's move that out of the way. But you can see this isn't bad. This is grim. And you can also see, because I'm going to show you, that is a real Gibson bridge. And that, right there, is what's used on a Gibson bridge, for the bridge. So if we were to take that out, you can see that there's a bit of a discrepancy there. <laughs> so, it's never going to work, is it? <laughs> So I now have a dilemma of one of two things. If I'd bought this in China, uh, I wouldn't be sending it anywhere. It certainly wouldn't be going back, would it? With these things like this, well, what am I to do? Well, I could send it back to Toman. I don't think I'll bother because it's a good example of how bad things are. But I'm going to fix them. I'm going to actually fill these in with dowels and re-drill as it should have been in the first place and then I'm going to fit the Gibson bridge I know it's gold don't worry about that I like a bit of a mix as a real Gibson bridge you'll notice also on a real Gibson bridge that there's no grooves it's because you have to cut them there they are and it looks similar underneath to the other one well Sort of, sort of similar. Yeah. The only thing is, one works and one doesn't. <laughs> this this cheap nasty one doesn't. So that's going to come out, and this one's going to end up being in there. Well, I've whipped off the uh, end plate, and as you can see, if you look careful, it's got them tiny little uh, type of uh, you know volume and tone pots, which are going to be coming out because they're off a job cheap Chinese rubbish I'm going to cut them out and uh, show you them. And here's another little difference. This is the stop tail piece off this guitar and the one in front, the golden one, is Gibson one. Now if you can't see the difference between them two you need to visit the opticians. You can see that this one is half a job and that one isn't. That is what you are buying when you buy cheap crap, right? It's as simple as that. They are not the same and never will be. But I do have some good news. These are for the stop tail piece. And if you take the old screw and you screw it in there, like that, very carefully pull it. First of all, you see a hole like what that one should be. But secondly, you see that it's removable. Now the great thing about it being removable is this. Let's take a look at the real one again. The real one is fatter. You can see that. It's got a fatter barrel piece down here. See that? If you compare the two, 
you can easily see that we will be able to make this hole maybe bigger and put in the real deals which is what we will be doing highly likely so those two holes were done right and these two holes were completely bodged but they sold the guitar nevertheless that's just quite incredible I'll put them back for now so we don't lose them we'll come back to them later so where does this leave us well it leaves us if you're an ordinary guitarist and you don't have much of a clue about some of this stuff it leaves you with a guitar that you would never ever have had playing correct in the first place those holes there are an absolute scandal this product shouldn't even be on the market that's how bad it is if you are just a guy who's just bought one and you want to learn and you want to oh why is it keeping out of tune why is it this way look this would never ever have been any good it's that simple what amazes me is the neck is good the body generally is good you know all the things that you can sort of work on are good but them aren't and those are two of the key things on this guitar that uh, make a guitar work if you haven't got the bridge sitting still and <laughs> it's moving around like that you're never going to go anywhere and that whoever bought this that could have been you so you just remember uh, Harley Benton or not Toman or not I don't care who they are there they are selling this type of product they don't know any better it's supposed to have been checked and set up that's never been checked as long as they live right now I like the Toman but I don't like Toman on this it's a piece of crap right it's as simple as that all this stuff here all of it every single last piece is junk right right now I've got that out of the way I've got it off my chest because I get frustrated when I pay for something that is crap I could have sent it back but I'm not going to what I'm going to do as I've said is I'm going to turn this guitar into something better now even if it's only a little bit better it's better and it will be playable I've got a bit of work to do on there but mark my words I will I will solve that problem right there and what we're going to do is we're going to fit two dowels in there glued in let them dry for a week or so or something like that and then we're going to drill two new holes the size of the Gibson bridge and then we're going to fit a Gibson bridge to it and uh, the other pickups you've seen them earlier then we're going to go in there we're going to have all new switching up here wiring through the whole deal we'll be doing it probably for this side of 400 to 450 pounds in total for everything and uh, that will make it worth doing won't it yeah because you won't buy a guitar like this one when it's been finished uh, for that price ever nobody will sell you one so this is a massive step forward for some people if you don't have a lot of money no problem let's buy one of these pieces of rubbish and let's turn it into a proper guitar but the guitar well I looked at this a bit closer too and I just wanted to tell you that that fabulous flame top is actually photo finish yeah you can say oh it's not but I know it is it's a photo flame finish like the old things used to be the old uh, some of the old fenders were photo flame photo flame I think they called them photo finish or something like that well that's what this is it isn't it's got a maple top let's not get that wrong just like the guys show you uh, on their other reviews but what they don't show you is they don't go and look really really careful at it and when you do look really really careful at it yes it's a maple top they can say that but it isn't this maple top you see that's a photo flame next job that's going to come up is we're going to refill these two holes here and we're probably going to grate out these two holes so we can put a proper step tail piece on the guitar once we've got these two problems out of the way the rest is going to be reasonably easy I think uh, I've just got to look at that uh, nut in fact we'll have a look at that now not the nut the uh, the truss rod let's just do that and there it is well you know I just thought I'd better do that before we go any further because if I hadn't checked there might not have been a truss rod in there to adjust the neck on this one you can see that uh, it is in there just about and uh, that makes it so we can probably adjust the neck let's hope we can and just to make sure 
I just thought I'd put a, a hex screw in the hex adjuster in there just so I can prove he has actually got one. Yeah, it'd be bad without that. And uh, yeah, they do come without them, or they do come broken, or they come this, or they come that. So next up, as I said, is filling those holes. Hold on. Okay. Well, there's a few things I wanted to uh, to clear up on this guitar. Uh, bearing in mind the absolutely appalling state that it came in. Now, look, I'm no luthier, but when parts are falling off you like that, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. You've got to do something about it. But my fixes are never like a luthier's would be. I've got a few scratches and things on here from the work I've uh, just completed. But I just want to talk a little bit about the parts. You've seen them. Oh look, I've got some new parts on there. Well, to be honest, the old parts are a bit of a problem. Firstly, there was that bridge. It's actually more ugly than I am. <laughs> so that's that. And the amount that it was moving was about an eighth of an inch in the, in the body. But there was also the, uh, the stop tail piece. This one looks pretty much like the real deal. Well, actually it doesn't look like the real deal. And that's where the problems start. Well, first of all, let's just take a quick look at uh, what I've actually done. I've got a, a, a bridge on here that you can see. Just take that off a minute. And what I did was to fit uh, some wood. I had to drill this out, put some new wood in. And I opted to fit genuine Gibson. And the reason I did that is the genuine Gibson, these bases here, are about Half, half the diameter of these bases of the cheap Chinese rubbish. I thought to myself at one stage, well, all the screws will be the same. Well, even in that screw there, you can see the amount of play is quite incredible. But when it was in the body, well, you've already seen that, right? So now, uh, these are in here, and they fit. Well, there's only one word for it. It's called perfect. Get that screwed down a bit. And when you fit the bridge, you'll notice, by the way, that the bridge actually has no grooves in it. And that's how a real one comes from Gibson. So you can see there's absolutely no play. And you can see that it's a, a slight angle. Now that's the angle that these boys set this up at. I fitted this exactly, uh, really, where the original was on this guitar. So let's not worry too much about any of that. It's all going to be exciting, right? Now look at the real one. It's completely different. In fact, if I was to take that off, you can see it's absolutely, completely different. So what you've now got is you've got no play in there, and you've got no play in there, which has really brought the guitar back to where it should be. But the only problem is by fitting these parts, as opposed to all the other parts that I saw on the internet, by the way, I didn't find any that were the same. They're all, well, less. <laughs> yeah, it's a less poor. <laughs> so, bear that in mind that this turns the thing into being like the real deal. That's how I describe it. Yeah, well, it's got its strings on. It's all going to be well, pretty good, really. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move back on to the pickups, which have all been ripped out. I just wanted to show you this stuff. You know, get a close-up of that. Uh, you can see the grooves there. Well, they're more like train lines, really. <laughs> and you can see how fat they are as well, these, these little pieces that are stuck in here. You've got three the wrong way around, three the other way around, and all the rest of it. Well, that's not the way it should really be. Let's go back out. Get rid of that. So, where does that all leave us? It leaves us with, actually, a bit of a job that you would have to do had you bought this guitar. And you thought it was a good guitar. Well, I just wonder how many other guys have got these things and uh, they don't actually know that problem exists. Scary. Yeah.
as I said, I'm not perfect. I've made a few scratches, but I don't care on a guitar like this because this is just a, a way of showing you how we can make it better if you've got enough money to do that. And it may or may not be better when we've finished. Yeah, we'll see. Now, I think one of you guys would buy one of these guitars in the first place because of how it works. It works quite incredible. And if you go and check the specification, the specification clearly says maple top, which is what it looks like, a maple top. There's only one problem. <laughs> what you're looking at isn't what it is. Let's look a bit closer. There had to be some, you know, something devious, even though it said maple top at Toman. Yeah, a bit sly, don't you think? Uh, looks to me, like photo flame. Let's have another look. Let's go close. Yeah. Now here we go. Looking at that, you can see, hopefully you can see, that the actual grain, let's do it from this way, the grain's going this way on that piece of maple that they talk about. It is maple. But if you look up here, where I scraped all this away, what normally happens when you look at a piece of maple that's got all this uh, figuring on? As you can see that, actually, through the wood. Now, if you look at this wood, you don't see anything through the wood because there's nothing to see. There is no grain, no figuring going through that wood. It's plain and simple. Very, very, very plain maple, and I don't know what type. If you look right at the top here, uh, I think if, if you were really, really looking careful, you might figure out whether it's photo flame or it's veneer, but I have never seen veneer as thin as that. So I think this is a photo flame. I'm pretty sure that it's a photo flame guitar, which is not what it was sold as. Although, if we were to argue with uh, the statement, oh, it's got a maple top, which is what they said it had, uh, it'd be hard to argue. It's plain and simply misleading, like every single aspect that I've come across up to now of this Harley Benton. It isn't what it looks or says it is. Well, I guess it says it is, but it doesn't say it's uh, photo flame, does it? Let's go back. Oh, for now, by the way, I've left the tuners on there. Uh, I don't want to go to any expense further than what I've gone to unless I have to. Uh, the tuners are slightly loose in the neck, but they're not that bad. Whether they'll stay not that bad or get worse is another story. But the next thing to do, I think, is what we're going to do is fit these four pots and uh, get that out of the way. I've ordered some nice 500k pots and they're just a question of screwing them in there, hopefully, and uh, yeah, we'll go down the road of that. I also want to show you in the back of this cavity, I think I did show you before, but uh, wait until you see it. Oh, well, we fit the pots. Let's get a bit closer again. Well, just before I do that, I'm doing a bit of hopping around here, but I did actually go and buy another bridge that had got rollers on it. It's a Wilkinson bridge, it said. It says here BM0003. Sorry, 003. BM003. It's got these little rollers on it. But guess what? It's got them great big holes like it got on the, the cheap and nasty Chinese stuff. And guess what? It probably is cheap and nasty Chinese, but it wasn't so cheap. It probably is so nasty. The funny thing is, these things here, you know, the bits that go in the body, are exactly like the ones that came out. Okay, well, there's the cavity. And uh, you can see quite clearly that this is really rough cut and the grain goes that way. So nothing like what's on the other side on the top. Okay, so I've got these things now. I'm going to go and fit them there. I think they're 500s. Alpha fi A A 500Ks. So I'm going to slap them in there and uh, we'll come back and take another look. And there they are fitted. Uh, you can see that uh, I had to leave this one around there a little bit because it wasn't machined right here. Try have it facing in like the real deal should have been, like this side. Should all face into each other. That one's around there. Bit of a bodge job on their part, I guess. And there you go. You get what you get, don't you? Well, the next thing to fit is this, uh, this switch. 
and I upgraded the switch from the real horrible one let me get that, out, that was fitted from the factory. There's the crappy one and there's the real deal. The real deal somehow they just work better don't they? So let's fit that. Well we'll temporarily fit it until we go through the wires. And there it is temporarily fitted until we've got all the wires where we need them. You can see around the front it has the necessary effect although I haven't actually changed this uh, this black knob yet. Yeah, we'll get to that. This doesn't look quite right either and maybe I'll get one of them, maybe I won't. Who knows, don't want to spend too much on this thing. So, that piece of wire and that switch that we pulled out, honestly, it's really, really bad. It's not what you'd expect in a, a reasonable guitar. In fact, it's very unreasonable. So I'll put it back in there. Let's get rid of it. Of course, we can move on to other things, such as the juicy pickups, which are really going to be a very high percentage of the result of this guitar, uh, tone-wise at least. And we've got all the bits in it, you can get a free pick, well, I like that. So I guess uh, I'm going to fit the surrounds on these now, let's move this rubbish out of the way, and get the surrounds on the decent stuff. It costs more than the guitar. So there's the first moral of the story. Now then, bear in mind that these were made to be exact fits in a real Gibson and they're probably of very similar quality. Well, I know they are. But we need to fit them into these things, these cheap and nasty things. We've got the, uh, the neck one that's a thin one and we've got the bridge one that's the fat one. Fortunately, these guys Say that one's the neck, and that one's the bridge. So it's all easy. Bridge, neck, neck, bridge. <laughs> so I've got a couple screwed into the uh, plastics. I think they're the right way up. Some other story. I think I'll do them like that. Who cares? They'll sound good or bad, won't they? <laughs> And there's a quick shot of the pickups fitted. What I did have to do is actually cut these two screws down, the, the screws that hold the pickups in place, on both of these because they were sticking out because it hasn't been routed deep enough in the body for proper screws. Mind boggles really, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, there they are in there. And I guess if we flip it over, you can see the wires dangling out, which we're going to look at presently. And there's a quick shot of the... Uh, the knobs fitted on the top. So I guess we're ready to move on to a bit more wiring. Well, okay, what we're gonna do next is get the wire out and rewire it. So which means running a, a harness down from the switch up here through the body into the back cavity, one wire down to the output and the rest wired into the system. So I'm going to go and make that now. I might show you a few little bits on the way, but uh, that's the quick version. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. Just stay there. Okay, well, here we are. You can see I've run some wires through from that side to that side. Nice and easy. And this is ready for the switch that I've got here. And I'm going to wire onto here. I'm not going to go into great depth to show you how to do it, it's all over the internet, so uh, I'm just going to get it connected up now and then we'll come back and get this bit done down here. Hold on. And there's a quick shot of it uh, wired in. Got all the grounds, got the ins and the outs and all the rest, a couple of capacitors, where you go. And there's the three-way switch, just be on the lookout for uh, the wrong type, which I got and I had to start faffing around. Well, I'm back. And uh, it's all been done. Got the wiring in. I've tapped the humbuckers. They work. Switch works. Decent switch. You know, all that stuff. I've checked the width of the neck, by the way, and it's exactly the same as on that Les Paul Custom I reviewed not long ago. So, on the width, that is. It's not the same on everything else, unfortunately. But don't worry. Well, let's recap a little bit. Uh, we have a Gibson Bridge, a real one. A Gibson stock tailpiece. I had to grate all the guitar away to get these things in there. I'm going to fit the strings now and we've got to do a few little grooves in there. Bit of a tune up. 
and it should be ready to play. Ah, we shall see. So I'm going to go and fit the strings now and uh, get these little grooves carved in here. And then I'll do a bit of an intonation. Yeah, I won't bother show you, don't worry. It's on all the other videos. And then uh, we can see what it sounds like, right? Hold on. I'm back. Well, what about that? There it is. Finished. Even plugged in, look. <laughs> I'll do some testing sometimes. It all looks great. But it looked great before, didn't it? <laughs> well, I've done the testing. I've done the rest. I've got a bit of a short somewhere in it, but I'll fix that up. Uh, before we get to the, the real playing out there. Actually, it's up there. <laughs> and uh, we shall see what we've got. I mean, it sounds all right on this thing, but this is like a, a line six thing on the floor over here. Not the helix, I might add. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about this guitar. What we paid for this guitar was about £120. It's $170. £125, something like that. And I had all that terrible problems, but it wasn't the problems that put me off, really. What it was, I hate to say this, it was Toman. Because I've got this little document here, signed by 165A, looks like, something like that. And it says very clearly, this instrument has been checked by our service team at Toman. It goes on, it gets much worse. Service is very important to us. I'm sure it is. Yeah, this instrument went through a stringent quality control before being sent out. Really? <laughs> the instrument's functions and settings are checked by our service team. To keep the item in pristine condition and help maintain its value, I advise to pay close attention to the correct humidity levels. What a load of tosh. They didn't check anything. The holes were a quarter of an inch to move on the the bridge. It's taken me uh, about a week to fix the problems on it and it's not over yet. There's more. I'm sure there is. I've got to fix that stupid wiring problem but uh, I'll fix that. Aside of that, uh, Toman didn't do a very good job so would I recommend Toman for their quality inspection and for their service important being important to them? No. Zero out of ten dudes. Zero. Don't buy one. Now, oh, okay, it's on the it's on the thing down there, and I'm I'm not going to really do anything here. I just wanted to show you that it does actually play. <laughs> probably see when I go out there and play it that it uh, it sounds good well it should do because the pickups cost 210 pounds or 310 dollars to you <laughs> yeah bare knuckle pickups the mules that's what you'll be listening to I'll be doing a separate review on them but you'll also be listening to a Gibson bridge and a Gibson stock tailpiece and Gibson wiring and Gibson pots and Gibson this and Gibson that so it's like a Gibson, but with the floors. Because <laughs> there is no fix for something that's bad as that. Would I buy one? No, I'd never buy another. I only bought it to, uh, to try and do this, but it turned into a nightmare. If you're an ordinary guy like I am, uh, no luthier type, you're going to really have your work cut out. I, I, I did do it, but could you? <laughs> Failing that, I guess you'd send it back, wouldn't you? But then you've got all that hassle and all the service reports and things to run through. Uh, anyway, there it is. It will sound pretty good through the amps because you're listening really to the electrics and the rest of it, and they're pretty good amps. But to go and buy the cheapest guitar around is not a good idea. I have this one pretty much right now. Intonation's right. The actions are right, everything's just so-so on it, just good enough for me to play really, just about. Uh, but it'll sound good, but I can never get rid of that underlying body with the sort of painted top over a maple top. 
It's crappy maple underneath and below that is some plywood by the way I've got it. And as for this uh, mahogany, well it might be mahogany but not the mahogany we, we've grown to like. So here's the plane. My advice, don't buy one. Don't waste your time trying to do it because overall it's going to cost you five or six hundred quid. And for that much you can go and buy a PRSSE or a Gibson whatever they've got in that price range, you know, an Epiphone or something. I don't know. They can't be any worse than what this was. Of course, now it's pretty good. It's got better pickups than you'd get on a PRSSE or a Epiphone. But uh, the fact is, <laughs> it's all that work as well involved, you know, and if you don't fix it or you slip with the drill or you, you get the idea. Yeah, it's not a good idea, is it? So, overall, uh, following on from the video you've seen and now having heard it, uh, yeah, it could be worth doing. Uh, the problem is that it will cost you between, well, it depends if you put cheaper pickups in, but I, I wouldn't if you're going to go down this route. I'd put decent, really decent pickups in, you know, these particular pickups, uh, bare knuckle, uh, pretty good pickups. Uh, very expensive, probably $300 in the USA, £210, £220 in England. Uh, changed the guitar dramatically, that did. And of course having bridges and the rest that don't fall off is, is good. I'm still not convinced about the wood, uh, but overall, between £450 and £600 total cost. So consider whether it's worth the effort uh, you know, in case you buy one of these and you couldn't fix those problems that I had, you'd be throwing the guitar in the bin. Uh, honestly, you would. So, so consider that carefully. I just wanted to have that little bit of a recap. Uh, you know, since I played it in a bit of depth and a bit of form, it uh, its intonation was perfect. Anyway, that's it for now. Here's the plane. Rock and roll. See you next time. Oh, just before I do go. Not out to 10, like I said. The guitar now, obviously, isn't what I bought. So it's probably going to get about a 7 out of 10 now. It's cost me five or 600 quid in the time and the rest of it. So it probably will do that. But uh, I don't recommend it. So, uh, yeah, it's coming up. See what you think. Until next time, rock and roll.